Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jackie Shawlogen. I am the Chief Information Security Officer here at UCANR, and I'm going to talk about administrative privileges on your local laptop or PC um, and how the process for getting those and the responsibilities that come with it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is why we restrict uh, administrative privileges on devices. And I want to go through uh, a couple things related to that. I've heard a lot of people ask why we put in a new policy restricting uh, admin access. And I, I do want to reiterate that it is not a new policy. This is something that was put in this system-wide UC policy, and it's been there since at least 2018. Um, UC policy IS3 is an overarching system-wide cybersecurity policy that we are supposed to be compliant with, that all UCs are supposed to be compliant with. So we are working towards that compliance by, by enforcing and implementing the, the uh, different policy rules that are in there. And one of those policy rules, and it's a very important one, is called the principle of least privilege. And what that basically means is that you give users or people access to the resources needed to perform their job and nothing more. So if you give them too much access, then you're in violation of the principle of least privilege. This is an established best practice in tech all over the world. It is an established part of the UC cybersecurity policy and it protects both UCANR and users themselves by not giving them too much responsibility. So we always say, uh, hear that expression, with great power comes greater responsibility. It's really important to note that 95% of cybersecurity breaches are caused by human error. And sometimes that's something as simple as having too much access that you're not supposed to have. Um, admin rights give control over an entire system. It's more than what people, most people realize. Having admin rights allows you to change system settings. It allows you to access all files on the system, including vital system files that are usually hidden and can't be modified. Uh, it allows removal of software that you may not realize you even need. Um, you're just removing stuff. It allows installation of software that hasn't gone through the vendor risk assessment process and isn't approved. It allows unintended or silent installs of malware, which is very problematic. You can click a link and not realize that something is being downloaded and installed onto your computer because you have admin rights by default. It allows the execution of code, which is also dangerous, and you may not realize it's happening because it's happening behind the scenes. It will, um, and one thing that I want to note is that CASE will allow us to have users install approved applications without having admin rights. So once we get CASE rolled out, CASE again is our asset management system that uh, is installed on everybody's laptops and PCs and helps us manage those laptop laptops and PCs through a central console. That will allow us not only to let you install approved applications that are on the list within CASE, but it'll also allow them to be updated and patched through CASE without having the extra responsibility of having admin rights on your, on your computer. But we do have a process for gaining privilege access or admin rights. Um, before you go down this path, I really want everyone to really thoroughly consider the responsibility that they're taking on when they have local admin rights. It's not just as simple as I need to install stuff when I need to install stuff. There's a whole lot more responsibility associated with it. And when you don't have those rights, you are more protected. So before you ask, think about whether you really need them and you want to make sure you have a really good business reason for why you want them. If you, if you have a good business reason, go ahead and make the formal request through Help Desk. Open a ticket with Help Desk, they'll assign it to me, and I will start the process. In your Help Desk request, you want to include a business reason for needing the privilege access. And it's got to be more than it, this is inconvenient for me. If you are a person that occasionally needs a printer installed, 
and you want to be able to install that printer whenever you want, that's really not a good business reason for needing local admin privileges all the time. If you're someone who travels a lot and you find that you are having to install printers or update applications, I know there's a lot of our studio um, users out there who need to apply patches on the fly. That's a totally different reason why you might need local privilege access. And that's one that, I, that I've approved before and would approve again. There is a local privilege access agreement. We'll get into the details of that in a moment. You, I really want you to carefully read it before you sign the document and then have your supervisor go ahead and sign the agreement as well. We want to make sure your supervisor is approving you having local privilege access on your device before we grant it. There's a short training. It's, it's less than 30 minutes that we'll sign you up for. And then once you finish that training, you provide the certificate to show me that you've done the training. And then once you've done all that, you've got all the approval, Help Desk will help um, assist you with setting up the admin privileges. There's some important key provisions in the local privilege access agreement that I want to point out as part of um, the process. So one of the things that you're agreeing to when you sign this agreement is that you won't compromise system security by uninstalling protection software. So there's two protection software packages that come installed on your PC or laptop when they go when it goes through central IT. And those two things are Malwarebytes, which is our anti-malware slash antivirus software. And then Case, which I mentioned before, is our asset management software that also helps us manage software. Um, you are agreeing that you will not install software that is not on the approved software list. So items on the approved software list have gone through the necessary vendor risk assessment process. We are required to do vendor risk assessments on software as part of the overarching UC-wide policy. This is not something that only a &R has to do. All the UCs have to do it. And you agree that you're not going to disable or remove other system users, local system users on that laptop. Um, as most of you are probably aware, Central IT usually has their own user that's on the laptop. And you're basically agreeing that you won't remove that user, you won't change its password, you won't turn it off, you won't deactivate it if you are getting local privilege access. Once we agree to all that, what Help Desk is going to do is set you up with a different user on your laptop that will have local privilege access. It will not be your standard user. And what you will do is you will log in with your standard user, and then you will elevate your privileges when you need to. For example, Let's say I log into my device under my standard user, which is Jay Wojin. I would always log into my device as Jay Wojin. What Help Desk has done is set up a second user for me called Jay Wojin underscore admin. So when I need to install something, I'll get a pop-up like this, a user account control pop-up that will ask me for an admin username and password. So when this happens, I will put in my jwojin underscore admin username and the password that goes with that account to install. You don't ever want to log in as your local admin user because when you use that user like a standard user to do routine things, that's when you're at risk for accidentally installing something that you didn't mean to install by clicking a link or a web page downloading something in the background or executing code or any of those things that you don't want to do. Um, a couple, a few other uh, important key provisions. If it's a shared device, for example, and there's multiple users on that device, you want to make sure you're not um, accessing their files. Um, you're going to keep their confidentiality and, and privacy by not looking at their folders and seeing what they have in their documents. If you have any trouble with your device, you will engage help desk right away rather than trying to troubleshoot and fix issues on your own. When you do this, sometimes you just make the problems worse, so it's better to engage help desk right away. Even if you're technically savvy, please at least contact them and let them know that you're having some problems and they can give you some suggestions. The um, provisions and the local, local privilege access uh, agreement will be renewed annually, so every year you'll sign a new agreement, you'll go through the training again, and um, we'll keep track of that for you so that you can be reminded to do that. And most importantly, it can be revoked at any time. If, we're, if you're found in violation of this agreement, if we find other ways to accommodate you that don't include local admin privileges, we will, we will 
implement those other ways and revoke uh, your local privilege access. That's just some of the ways to keep you and your device um, protected in the future. So that is everything. Is there any questions related to that? So there is a question um, talking about, in some cases we work through and within our respective county IT systems, the machines are imaged and managed as county machines. In, in the case of CASE, for example, we're having David Hatter and county IT talk through installing or not. Thoughts about those situations. So whenever it comes to um, sharing with county IT, I, I know there's a little bit of a gray area there. And what I tend to fall back on is whether or not the device is owned by UCANR. If the device is owned by ANR, then it needs to satisfy ANR cybersecurity standards, which includes malware bytes and case and all of those things. I am more than happy to work with anybody on making sure county IT can support those devices by giving them an admin user so they can do uh, troubleshooting with you. We want to make sure that county IT's admin user is separated from a &R IT's IT user, for example, so that there is an auditing trail. So any any kind of action the county IT user would do would be um, would be under their user and be clear that they had done it versus uh, central IT. But I know there is some gray area there, there, and I'm happy to work with any county IT or have any discussions on how we can satisfy their cybersecurity requirements while also satisfying ours. If it's a county IT device, if it is a purchased by them, owned by them, then meeting their standards is what, what we need to do. Um, I, what I would really like to find out more information about is what their standards are, just to make sure that if they're access, if you're accessing any ANR's resources with a county device, that it's got enough security on it that it would it would satisfy our our requirements as well. Um, and then someone's asking is can or should we replace our own laptop batteries? So with that, I would uh, suggest that if you feel comfortable replacing your own uh, laptop batteries. If you've done it before, um, go for it. You know, it, it's not a terribly, depending on the laptop, it's usually not a terribly um, difficult thing to do. But if you're not comfortable or you're worried about it, then please, like, you know, don't, don't feel you have to do it yourself. Definitely reach out to IT and see if they can help you. Sometimes we can give um, advice um, over video. You know, we can help you replace something over video using a Zoom like this. Um, there's been plenty of times in my past where we used uh, FaceTime to troubleshoot um, unjamming printers. So there's plenty of other ways we can assist you, even if you're not right here with us here at Set in Davis um, over video chat or conference or anything like that. Just let us know how we can help. Reach out to us. We're happy to help in any way that we can. And I don't see any other questions. So I just want to say thank you for letting me talk to you guys today about this. And again, please feel free to reach out to me or IT in general if you have any questions or if you have any, um, any needs whatsoever. Thank you.